Alex Jones' defamation trials are not going well for Jones. But is this the end of misinformation? Welcome to America Uncovered, I'm Chris Chappell. This episode is sponsored by Surfshark. You should be using a VPN like Surfshark to protect yourself whenever you go online. Especially if you don't want everyone to know you're Googling something controversial. Like Alex Jones and his views on pretty much everything. Alex Jones has become a well-known figure in American politics. He's also well-known abroad, although it's only because people thought someone shaved Donkey Kong. Jones has been described as America's leading conspiracy theorist. One of the most prolific and influential conspiracy theorists in contemporary America. And Reynolds Rapp's number one customer. Given that it's Alex Jones, he's probably honored by those titles. If you somehow don't know who he is, Alex Jones hosts a radio show and has multiple uh, uh, news websites, including the infamous Infowars. With his mini media empire, he makes a huge amount of money. In fact, he and his media company have a net worth of between $135 million to $270 million, according to a forensic economist. Really? So he has a net worth of a number or up to double that number. It's the kind of accuracy you want from a forensic economist. But it might all come crashing down for Alex Jones because he's been ordered to pay $49 million in damages to the family of a child killed at Sandy Hook Elementary School in 2012. That's just the tip of the iceberg. Also, underneath the iceberg is an alien submarine, and that's what really sunk the Titanic. Well, that and the clockwork elves. First, a little background. After the Sandy Hook school shooting, Alex Jones claimed multiple times on his various platforms that the shooting was a hoax and that the grieving parents shown in the videos were paid actors. Sandy Hook is a synthetic, completely fake, with actors, in my view, manufactured. Typical Jones reporting. Balanced, unbiased, well-researched, and articulate. Some of his followers took the message and ran with it. They doxed and harassed the parents of some of the children killed at Sandy Hook Elementary School. After all, if those parents were paid actors, the best way to get them to admit it is to shoot at their house? Yep, when someone is potentially about to murder me, that's when I'm ready to come outside and have a nice leisurely chat. Now, to be fair to Alex Jones, he eventually started walking back his statements about Sandy Hook including saying that he believed it was real now. No, no, no. I believe it happened. Stop saying I said it didn't happen. And stop saying that I'm saying no kids died. Because I want to talk about human-animal hybrids and humanoids. That was after Sandy Hook parents decided to fight back by suing Jones for defamation. Here's what Jones said during a three-hour deposition for the trial, which the parents' lawyers put on YouTube. He claimed that his reaction to Sandy Hook was a form of psychosis from being lied to by the government and mainstream media. So you have to look at the agenda behind things. You have to balance things about why has the mainstream media lied so much? Why have governments lied so much? The fact that the public doesn't believe what they're told anymore. And are we going to criminalize questioning Jesse Smollett or WMDs or babies in incubators? And it really is the fact that we've allowed the government and institutions to become so corrupt that people lost any compass of what's real. And I've, you know, I myself have, you know, almost had like a form of psychosis back in the past where I basically thought everything was staged, even though I've now learned a lot of times things aren't staged. So, um, you know, I think as, as a pundit and someone giving opinion um, that, you know, my opinions have been wrong, but they were never wrong consciously to hurt people. It always feels weird to say this, but Alex Jones kind of has a point when it comes to the part about a major loss in institutional trust and the problem with criminalizing questioning mainstream narratives, which sometimes turn out to be false. He just doesn't get as worked up about it when it's not about human-animal hybrids and humanoids. But the court didn't buy the idea that Jones shouldn't be held responsible for his statements because he didn't do it to hurt people. 
and Jones lost. Big time. Yeah, that headline did just say lawsuits, plural. Because people in America will sue over anything. It's like you can't even go on your massive platform and accuse grieving parents of being deep state actors, causing your more deranged listeners to shoot at their homes anymore. What is this country coming to? In fact, Jones lost so badly that for some of the lawsuits, the judges made a default judgment against him. In essence, what that means is he lost by default because he repeatedly refused to follow the court's orders and procedures. Alex Jones not a bang authority? No. One judge also accused him of repeatedly lying in court, but she only gave him a scolding for that. You're already under oath to tell the truth. You've already violated that oath twice today. It seems absurd to instruct you again that you must tell the truth while you testify, yet here I am. You must tell the truth while you testify. This is not your show. What's she talking about? Is she implying that he wasn't telling the truth when he said that certain politicians are literal psychic demons that operate out of a base on the moon? Sounds plausible to me. Things were not looking good for Jones. The only thing left to do was determine what Jones would pay for each case and sit back and watch Jones try to get out of it. How? I'll tell you after the break. Welcome back. Last year, Alex Jones was found liable of defamation in several trials, but separate trials were scheduled to determine appropriate damages. So now, the damages trials have begun and the media is engaging in full-on schadenfreude watching them. Doesn't help that Jones's lawyer apparently accidentally sent the entire contents of Jones's phone to the opposing side during the first defamation damages trial. Included in this were apparently a nude photo of Jones's wife that he sent to Roger Stone, who always looks like he's looking at nude photos of his friends' wives. Jones's lawyer tried to get the trial declared a mistrial because of his mistake, but it didn't work. The trial continued and the jury rendered their verdict. The jury ultimately decided that Jones should pay $4 million in compensatory damages and another $45 million in punitive damages. This was after Jones claimed that a $2 million penalty would sink his company. Although the judge didn't believe him, you know, because he's Alex Jones. He's like the story of the boy who cried, they're turning the wolves gay. Texas, which is where the trial happened, has a cap on punitive damages that might end up reducing the total to one and a half million dollars, but that's just the first damages trial. There are many more coming. Some of them have been delayed because InfoWars parent company, Free Speech Systems, has filed for bankruptcy. Jones has also been accused of hiding assets. Hold on, moving money, declaring bankruptcy, maybe even an accidental phone leak? I don't believe any of this happened. I think he just hired crisis actors. But sneakiness aside, these trials have created a lot of questions. More after the break. Welcome back. Alex Jones has been found liable for defamation in multiple cases in order to pay $49 million in damages for the first case. But those cases are raising a lot of questions. Punitive damages are intended to punish the perpetrator, and $49 million is a lot of punishment. But this seems to be about more than just punishing Alex Jones. I ask that with your verdict, you not only take Alex Jones' platform that he talks about away, I ask that you make certain he can't rebuild the platform. That's what matters. Take him out of this discourse, of this misinformation, of this peddling of lies, and make sure he can't do it again. That is punishment. That is deterrence. Okay, I see. So really, this is all part of the war on misinformation. It's to send a warning. It's about more than just Alex Jones. It's about misinformation mongers everywhere. But how much should Alex Jones be held responsible for the actions of people who listen to him and take that to their own extreme? 
He never told people to go shoot at the homes of Sandy Hook parents. Just like the leaders of BLM never specifically told people to burn down buildings. How much responsibility should people have for the actions of their most extreme followers? One thing is clear though, this likely won't stop Alex Jones. I mean, can Alex Jones really be stopped? Jones has already had his platform removed multiple times. He's been banned from YouTube, Facebook, Apple, and Twitter. He may have even been banned from fast food restaurants for yelling his theories there. Sir, this is a Wendy's. And it appears it didn't even make a dent in his earnings. Heck, court testimony claims he made more money afterwards. I mean, this is Alex Jones we're talking about. He's like a cockroach. A loud, red, sweaty, human-cockroach hybrid. He's unkillable. Even on trial, he still goes viral. One of the things you've been talking about on your show is your allegation that government officials are aiding in pedophilia, <coughs> child trafficking, and the grooming of children, right? Well, you mean like what Jeffrey Epstein did with the Clintons? Ah! That looked so much like it came from his own show, I'm surprised it didn't end with a pitch for one of his weird supplements. Jones has called the trials a witch hunt and a kangaroo court. He even accused one of the judges of being demonically possessed. I'm sure that was tongue in cheek. I mean, it's not like he'd ever actually call someone a demon, right? Right. But if the point of the trial is to make an example out of him, is Jones entirely wrong? Even Fox News didn't come to Jones's defense regarding Sandy Hook. But there are plenty of people wondering about the free speech implications here. There are some who say that freedom of speech is a serious issue in these trials. Others say that Jones's choices have taken the free speech implications out of the trial. Thanks to the internet, lies and misinformation can spread like never before. But is removing platforms the best way to deal with that? Yes, Jones peddled fake news. But this could be a slippery slope of removing any news deemed fake. And who gets to make those decisions? Oh God, I'm starting to sound like him, aren't I? Alex Jones admitted during the damages trial that the Sandy Hook shooting happened and said that he never intended to hurt the parents. He's lied multiple times during the trial, so who knows if he means it, but does it matter? Doesn't Alex Jones have the right to speak whatever nonsense he wants to? And don't his followers have the right to listen? The courts are holding him accountable for damage his followers caused to grieving families. But are the courts the best place to fight a war against misinformation? This court has decided yes. And now the January 6th committee has gotten involved as well, asking for data from his phone. I'm sure that will be interesting. Roger Stone can attest to that. And this episode is sponsored by Surfshark. Surfshark was recently rated an editor's choice for the best VPN for privacy and security by PC Mag. That's because Surfshark can help you keep your online activities private. Like, let's say you wanna watch a controversial online show. Whether it's for entertainment or for critique, it doesn't matter, you might not want the government or your internet service provider to know. And that's why you should be using Surfshark. Surfshark even keeps a server in the British Virgin Islands. You can use that for maximum privacy because the laws there allow Surfshark to not keep any user data logs. Plus, when you get Surfshark, you can use it on all your devices, laptop, cell phone, iPad, all for the cost of just one account. So if you haven't yet, check out Surfshark. When you sign up now using the link below, you'll get 83% off a two-year plan, plus three extra months for free. So go to surfshark.com uncovered and use the code uncovered to secure this deal. The link is below. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.